Hello everyone. In my video about simple package development, I mentioned that I use a really simple Docker Compose script for getting a local Laravel environment set up, so I figured this would be a great opportunity to show you how to do this on your own machine. I've also written an in-depth article on this topic as well, which I've linked in the description below. Before we get started, I just want to mention that this tutorial is for pretty much any beginners who don't really have any experience into Docker or who want to know more about what the software is and is capable of. This is primarily just a tutorial to get you up and running with Docker, Docker Compose, and a local Laravel environment on your computer. You can think of Docker like a super light VM. Essentially what it does is it allows you to specify virtual machines called containers and build them up from software images, whether it's a specific Linux distro or one that's meant for a default Nginx web server. These containers are not resource intensive at all. Compared with your typical VM, multiple can run in parallel with each other while the parent machine barely takes a hit on resources. And that's exactly what it's designed to do. The philosophy of lightweight containerization means that you'll essentially split up each service that your application needs, whether it's a web server, PHP service, a MySQL service, into their own isolated environments. If you need to change an aspect of one machine, like upgrading the PHP version, it's as simple as a single line change and doesn't affect any of the other services that are running. This organization might seem complicated or hard to set up if you're using more than one container, but Docker makes it insanely easy using their Docker Compose tool. With a single YAML file, we'll be able to define multiple containers that will all work within a single network and be able to communicate with each other in order to accomplish a single goal, which in our case is running our Laravel application. So let's hop into our working directory, which right now contains absolutely nothing. To get started, all we need to do is create a docker-compose.yml file. Let's open it up and define its version as 3. This is the modern standard that pretty much all Docker Compose files should have. Looking back at their documentation, which feel free to explore yourself with the link in the description, we can see that we need a list of items under a main services heading. Here they have a Redis container, a database container built on Postgres, and a few containers for a sample voting application. Ours is just going to be a bit simpler. Let's head back over to our Docker Compose file. The first thing that I personally like to do is define an internal Docker network that all of our services will use. While this isn't 100% necessary, it helps isolate my projects and allows me to run multiple of these containerized applications while keeping everything organized. We're going to call this network simply Laravel. And now we define our services. We're going to be using three, one for Nginx, one for MySQL, and one for PHP. Each of them will also list out Laravel under their list of networks. Under the Nginx service, we need to add a depends on heading and list out our PHP and MySQL services. The reason that we need to do this is that our web server needs to rely on these two services being up and ready before it's initialized. What this does is tell Docker to spin up these dependent on services first and then run the Nginx service afterwards. Now that we have our services defined, we need to tell them what exactly they're built on. This could be a Linux distro, custom application, or any number of Docker images that are available on the Docker Hub. But for this use case, I like using Nginx Stable Alpine from the Docker Hub. It's an Nginx starter image that's built on the lightweight Alpine Linux distro and is perfect for this use case. Under our image, we can define a container name. This overwrites the pre-generated one by Docker and will help us refer to our services internally in our application. It could be anything you like, but I'm just going to pair it off the service name and call it Nginx. Ports defines what ports of this service are open to our local machine. By defining 8088 80, this tells Docker to bind our computer's 8088 port to the Nginx container's 80 port. No other ports will be exposed for this container. Now it's time to define our volumes for the Nginx service. A volume in this case is essentially a symlink from the local machine, in this case my computer, to a particular place inside the Docker container. We need files for our web server, which by default looks in var www.html. So let's add our local SRC folder as a volume to that path. Our Nginx service is now finished, and it's time to move on to MySQL. Just like our previous container, we're building this one off of an image, MySQL 
I'm giving it a container name. We're also going to add this restart flag here and set it to unless stop. By default, a container doesn't restart under any circumstance, but this lets Docker know to restart the MySQL container if for some reason it stopped. I'm also going to set this TTY flag as true, which enables a shell-like interface if we need to interact with the MySQL container at all. For the ports, you can usually use the default 3306 and 3306 matching the default MySQL port in the container to your local machine, but my computer is already running a local MySQL instance with that port, so I set this one to 4306, which prevents any conflicts from popping up. Adding a volume to our MySQL container isn't strictly necessary, however it is required if you want your data to remain whenever a container is stopped or restarted. I've created a local MySQL folder in our project and I'm linking it to the var lib MySQL directory in our container. The last piece we have for this is a few environment variables. These are referenced during the MySQL initialize process to configure the database name, username, password, and service name. We're setting these to the previous Laravel defaults, values that I'm pretty accustomed to using. However, you can change these as you see fit. PHP is our last service we need to expand on, and this one is a little more complicated than the last two. Where we built the last two using an image, we can't directly do that here. The reason being is that Laravel requires a PDO extension, and as far as I know, that's not installed into the container automatically with any PHP images that I've found. There's a super easy workaround for this though, which I'm going to show you. We're going to replace the image heading with build. This lets Docker know that we're going to be building our service from a Docker file locally instead of from a Docker image on the hub. Under that, we're going to define a context, which is the directory to search for, in this case the current directory, and we need a file name, which I'm going to creatively call Dockerfile. I'm going to create the Docker file right now and add in the rest of the service attributes reflecting what we've done with the previous two services. All right, let's open up our Docker file. Like our services in Docker Compose.yml, we need to start with a base image to build our container on. Instead of using image though, we use the phrase from. I'm gonna use PHP 7.2 FPM Alpine, which matches the same Linux D show that the web server is based on. After our container builds up with that image, we need to install our missing extensions. This might seem like it would require some configuration or a multi-step install process, but Docker makes this insanely easy with a single line. First we use run to call a command on our new container, and that command is docker php ext install. It does exactly what it sounds like it does, it installs php extensions. The two that we're missing we then pass in as arguments, pdo and pdo underscore mysql, save the file, and that's all you need to do for the php service. Let's take a quick second and hop back to our nginx service in the docker compose file. While this does build up the container for a default Nginx service, and our Laravel application files are being passed through to the default web root at var www.html, it's not configured for a Laravel application. In order to overwrite this, we have to add in a custom Nginx config file. Utilizing volumes on the Nginx service makes this really easy. Since it's essentially a symlink to the container, we can create a local Nginx config file on our machine, and then attach it where Nginx would normally look for the default config file. I'm gonna open it up and write out a super basic Nginx config file for our Laravel application. using the public folder as our web root and swapping out the try files 404 in the root location for an index.php call. Everything else is pretty much boilerplate.
Save the file and we're all done with our Docker configuration. In order to test it out before we install our Laravel application, let's make sure this all works. Create an index.html file in a public folder in the source directory. And I'll add in a line of text so I know it's working. At the command line, if we run docker compose build and docker compose upd, we'll build the docker file that we put together for the PHP service and then run through and set up our containers from our docker compose file. The reason for this D flag is it stands for detach and it lets docker know that we want these containers to keep running in the background until we manually bring them down again. We can then navigate in our browser and go to localhost port 8088, the one that we defined as open in our nginx service, and we see our h1 text. Let's get our Laravel application in there. You might be thinking that we need to bring the container down before we make any modifications to the code or folder structures, and that's 100% incorrect. All we have to do is remove what's currently in the src directory and install our fresh copy of Laravel over top of it. Once that's finished, we can refresh our browser and see the changes take place immediately. One final thing I'd like to go over though is database access and migrations. If you have PHP installed on your machine and try to run PHP artisan migrate locally, you're going to encounter an error no matter what because the MySQL container is not exposed to your local PHP installation. You want to tell the PHP container to run artisan migrate, which will run the migrations and save them to the connected MySQL database inside the Docker Compose network. For this, we'll need to use Docker Compose exec, which tells the containers that you want to run a command on the actual container. The next arguments tell you what container, in our case PHP, and then the command that you want to run php, the full path to artisan, and then migrate. Well, we still ran into a problem. Oh yeah, the MySQL credentials in our .env file are wrong. Let's open that up and correct this. The db host value is not localhost, since MySQL is not running on the php container. Our service name that we set in the docker compose file to MySQL for the MySQL service is what is internally used through the Docker Compose network to define container hosts inside of other containers. So we'll set that to MySQL, and we also set the database name and username to Homestead and the password to Secret. If we save this and run the Docker Compose exec migration command again, they run through just as expected. Finally, let's test out that our nginx config file for Laravel is working perfectly fine as well. We'll just add in a test route that returns some text. If we go back to the browser and navigate to that page, it's displaying exactly what we expected it to. And that's basically all there is to it. While this is in no way meant to be a deep dive into the wonder and magic that is Docker, it's a great start to get introduced into a super useful and powerful technology. Even though there's a slight difference in performance, I've saved so much time and am so much more organized now that my local Laravel projects are all brought up with these Docker Compose files instead of running on PHP and MySQL that's installed locally on my computer. For instance, if I wanted to experiment with a new version of PHP or MySQL, it's nothing more than a line change in my Docker Compose file and another run of the Docker Compose up command. I hope this helped you out, and as always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below, or you can let me know on Twitter. If you like this video, or any of the other ones I've made, consider donating to my Patreon linked below to directly support new videos being created. Thanks for watching.